festival units. We all love them. Sometimes we hate them. But these are by far the best and big banner summon for each month. And with Netmarble now almost changing the schedule by adding in a few more festivals like Subnack and Golfar. My video that I made at the start of the year where I tried predicting a few festival characters has... Oh, I feel like it needs an update now. But also, I'm going to be going over some more collaborations, which I don't normally cover. So for this video, I want to try and predict the final banners coming at the end of the year, which isn't exclusive towards festival characters. My opinion still stands for what I think, but however, I feel like we have some more knowledge now, now that we know the patterns of Fortnite and also the Catastrophe storyline. So we can hopefully correctly predict some of the banners and some of the collaborations coming at the end of the year. So let's jump in, starting off with July. All right, so I'll leave a link in the description for like, the past banners. Someone who's made this, I actually don't know who it is, I just found it in Discord, is uh, has made a really, really good banner that shows like once again the character is so nicely done. Uh, but if we go towards July of each year, only going back two years because that's our regular pattern essentially, right? Uh, we go back towards 2022, we did obviously have Berserk Esterosa, which was more importantly a holy war, but also a villain. That seems to be the theme they're doing for July. And then going over to a year later for 2023, we did get Demon King, also a villain, also a big bad, also a holy war. Now that being said, going over towards 2024, we now, the holy war has now ended essentially, right? Like we're now getting Four Nights Apocalypse. And I do feel like for July, we're going to be getting Four Nights Apocalypse Chapter 1. However, the story is so very early to where Chapter 1 technically chapter two but chapter one is going to most likely cover episode two of the anime which is only going to recently show donnie and then most likely the black knight so i will say the black knight make an appearance could make him an actual festival character and he is in a quite an important character quite a fan favorite and since he doesn't really get any visual change it is very possible that he could become a festival character so i want to put up there that for july he most likely will be a festival character just from the fact that he is going to be most likely appearing in chapter one however if they don't want to do four nights apocalypse festivals just yet then that's completely fine because well we still have characters from seven sins that we still need to get and i feel like four come on my out would make a perfect example once again going off the pattern of the last two years where we get a big villain four come on my out would be perfect also the fact that we now have these new intro now it could just be exclusive towards of course Eskinor, but I feel like they gotta make these like you know big characters and you know it almost if anything the reason why they delayed skinny Eskinor for so long was because they wanted to make this intro make them such a big character where it's almost worth the wait right and I feel like people who have wanted full come mayo for such a long time now so to have to wait so long for him to get a cooler intro where he maybe absorbs commandments who knows what they do maybe you see you know berserk mayo it would be such a cool intro which I would love to see what well, that would be kind of weird though because then that would make Mayo to have like two intros because he's technically part of Eskinor. but yeah i feel like for july having a full Mayo would be uh my pick if you want to know my last pick for last year it actually was possible which i wasn't far off if we are gonna be getting chapter one in july that was my prediction for why we were getting possible which isn't too fair wrong it's just i didn't expect we were gonna get a prologue the month prior I, I, yeah, it's hard to predict. All right, so after July, we do get a collaboration in August. This always happens. And for 2022, we did get Echidna and also Reinhardt. And of course, going over towards August in 2023, we did get the AOT collaboration part two. So going off the pattern, of course, we know it's a collaboration. But also, more importantly, it's a part two or part three, right? So I think the best way we can go off it is the collabs that deserves, you know, a rerun right now. And I feel like there's only, I mean, there's four, but there's only really two. I mean, Stranger Things wants a rerun. Doesn't need one, but it wants a rerun. We don't care. I don't think it's going to happen. I feel like these are going to be more collective characters rather than them actually being meta. I don't see them returning. I don't want them to return it, despite me being an actual, you know, Stranger Things fan. I really like the series, just not in Grand Cross, of course. Uh, King of Fighters is always another possibility because they have so many characters. It's owned by Netmarble. I feel like we've gotten the most important ones, which is like my Kyo Terry. So I don't think we need to get another collaboration, but once again, it's always that possibility. But the two clubs I do think could happen is one, Mushoku Tensei. We did see them return the Shiro collaboration, which actually buffed the characters. And I would love for them to return not only Galane, Roxy, to hopefully get them two buffed up, but also, I guess, Rudius and also... 
Um, I mean, you can't really buff up Eris. She's a PvE character. But yeah, more importantly, Roxy and also Ghislaine. Those are like the two actually like, good characters in the collaboration. The reason why I don't mention Rudius is because, well, if we do get part two collaboration, the part two character should be an older version of Rudius, which is what I really want. And one important thing that was missed out on the first part was Sylvie. Sylvie, if you look at collaborations when they typically do Mishoka Tensei, they typically like to add her. But instead for Grand Cross, they did something different and was to add, you know, Ghislaine instead of obviously Sylvie. And that might be because we're already planning to save Sylvie for part two because she does make a massive big prominence in, of course, season two of Mashuka Tensei. So, uh, yeah, I feel like if we're going to get collaboration for Mashuka Tensei, it would be an older version of Rudius, but also Sylvia yeah, as another character. So, that is for Mashuka Tensei. I feel like that's the most likely one, but uh, I guess a fan one I want the most a little bit is, of course, Demon Lord Rumoru Slime Part 3, which will be the first Part 3 collaboration, which is Era right now. It's also one of the more popular collaboration in terms of Grand Cross, and if they're to go back and the buff up remove, which is what we want in a way, and then for them to release what will most likely be Shion and also Diablo. If you watch Slime, you lot know that Shion and Diablo are kind of like a dual unit in a way. Not a dual unit, but like they're kind of a pair, right? Like they do stuff together. Even on Slime, Isaac and Memories, the other gacha game. Because they are kind of like a duo in a way. So, uh, yeah, would love them to release a new collaboration with Slime where we get the older buffs with the characters and Diablo and also Shion, which to be fair, have done new moves new power-ups in the new season so that'll be um very very cool if we were to get characters based off those recent episodes but it might be too recent to where netmarvel hasn't had the time to make those characters so maybe that's why we're going to be getting more sugar tense and then next part two or next time we get a collaboration that isn't a new one would most likely be slime so yeah i feel like it's gonna be sugar tense moving into september last year was hell and we just got our OC Kadashibi storyline. If we're going to be getting a new July, you know, Fortnite chapter and then a collaboration, that does mean it does line up for September once again to be a new Ragnarok actual, you know, chapter. And of course, at the end of every month now, we're getting collaborations or festivals. So it makes sense that the new Ragnarok character is most likely going to be festival. Plus last year, the panic is all adding up already. So yeah, getting a new form would make a lot of sense. We did get leaks a while ago that the new chapter of Ragnarok is most likely going to be well not most likely it's going to be the Colosseum the part we saw in the trailer almost like three years ago now and we do get to see four and I think they even revealed that Loki is going to get revealed and also four so it's very possible it could either be between Loki or whoever that may be or also four but I feel like the most obvious one is four because why not right plus she's gonna be unknown which leads into the new collaboration for october and uh if we look at the last few patterns now it's always going to be a new one like october was obviously uh you know overlord the year prior was shield hero so it makes sense again for us we're going to get probably a new collaboration and i feel like it can only be two clubs but i'm definitely leaning towards this collaboration shangola frontier shangola frontier is most likely going to be the next collaboration we're going to get if it is going to be a new one and there's just so much reasons why we're going to get it one net marble's making a game off it so that's the reason why we got tower of god it's the reason why we got king of fighters it's a reason why we're probably going to get solar level in the future but also shangola frontier the animates finished which means net marble has now time to work on the characters make the actual you know animations also his own by kadansha which is a main reason why we get slime aot they're the reason why we get those collaborations because obviously 70 since fauna's apocalypse is owned by kadansha so it, like it's a no-brainer it's owned by kadansha netball was making a collaboration and also shangala frontier they do give out that ip quite often they've done it with obviously grand summoners and also recently i think almost a few like, i think a few like, a week ago now actually the seven nights chronicle adventure the, the idol game that number does own has just done a collaboration with shangala frontier so I would not be surprised if this is the collaboration, but I guess not. If not, then it's going to be solo leveling, which I feel like it would be the second new collaboration if we were to get. But I feel like Shangala Frontier is just more likely. All right, so November, these are the big bads. Or at least they were until we got Elizabeth. So it really could be anyone. But bear in mind, once again, this should probably be another Fortnite chapter, which should be chapter three, which will basically be the Nassian story with the Orange Knight. None of the characters in that chapter deserve to be festival. So we're most likely not going to get a festival based off Fortnite's apocalypse this one the more likely you're going to go back and give another festival character and i'm sticking with what i predict 
predicted i think earlier in may and that is and that is a new festival king now of course it could be any king whatever they decide they want to do but my gut telling me the one festival and the one we deserve a little bit is the Yagrasil cloth one the one you free hardly mentioned too many times now i'm getting sick of it in a way but he's got to come at one point in fact if you look at my last prediction of what i made when i said king another and almost one that i wanted to put in was gopher because gopher and king before we got the new gopher had had a festival like two to three years almost right so both wouldn't deserve it but i feel like the most likely one was going to be king but instead we got gopher as like a filler festival in between the actual global and jp annie so that is once again telling me that yeah i guess a november king would be make a lot of sense especially because the fact that you know two years prior the like what the two years ago now in 2022 was it 2021 wow it would we did get fairy king so it'd been well it would have been three years since that day so if we do get him in november since so we've gone a festival king like you can't look him in the eyes and tell him he doesn't deserve it plus it'd be kind of cool as well especially if it gets like an intro like how eskino got one because the actual the reason why he gets that armor or the power up he does get is you see diane dancing and king powered him up so it'd be pretty cool if he's an intro something along the lines of that where you get to see like king get powered up that'd be very cool would love that one but then moving it in towards of course the december festival this one is almost easy to predict because we always know it's gonna be meliodas so i guess we can you know say it's gonna be meliodas here but the problem is well which one now there are a few one i think people are going to go towards is the king melee i won't i won't say four melee because he does have a different outfit but the melee way he does wear this outfit you can see on screen which is what he wears in the movie i think he even features wearing it at the end of the actual you know services storyline but i feel like with the fact that we now have the new intros that almost give you a reason to redo characters and i made a video a while ago actually when we got the intros to show the possible intros we could be getting if they were to decide to actually do festival characters again and uh yeah i feel like getting a assault melee for new year's would make a would be probably one of the most hyped characters we can get in a very long time now you're probably wondering what do you mean assault melee we've already gotten one but his intro would be this on screen now where he's wearing his normal armor then he erupts you know down at the start of the game and then boom turned to assault melee and more importantly to distinguish the characters here he would have an act you would have wings so you know you can tell it's not the green assault melee and you can tell obviously straight away that it is the new assault melee you know, plus you'll probably have some awe around him which you love doing towards like you know the festivals that have the same models and in fact, this is the melee I thought we were going to get last year, but we got true magic melee instead. And But if you were to give him the new melee ultimate, which we're now in-game basically, where he does do the combo turret move where all the sins power him up, do the massive full counter, and then boom, hits him with it, killing the Demon King. I feel like this is probably most likely now going to be the most likely festival character we could get for a new melee OS. But if not, it could, of course, be the King melee. If they really want to, they can even do the Berserk melee, which I don't think people would mind. I would love to see that as well, especially with his intro with something like this on screen. That would be pretty sick as well. But I didn't really talk too much about Fortnite Apocalypse in terms of getting characters, but I really do hope for part twos, you know, the mid months, we hopefully get more Fortnite characters because, like I said, we need to get Donnie, we need to get Nassians, we need to get Annie. And while they don't deserve to be festivals just yet, they do deserve to be characters, so hopefully they can start adding them in between each festival character. So, boy, thank you for watching, and uh, yeah, peace.